最初の質問でから始めます。えっ、ー、と最初の質問ですけれども、えっ、ー、と何人がきっかけでえっ、ー、とこの生乳業を始めたんでしょうか。OK。OK。What was the question? What inspired me to get into this? When I was a little boy,、uh, watching the cartoons. They never represented me and my people accurately.、Um, I came to my father took me when I was 11 years old to travel throughout the United States. I went to 38 states, Canada and Mexico, on this trip when I was 11. And I would always see cartoons in those days, and they had always、uh, never was voiced by my people. It was always voiced by somebody else doing a stereotype version. So I was always wonder why, why, why did they speak like that? And so I wanted to kind of like work in that genre and rectify it. And、um, uh, consequently, I came to Los Angeles and helped develop Asian American theater and Asian American movement. And、uh, that's why I love voice acting. Because I can represent my people correctly. So yeah, really, my my journey started、uh, inspired by my dad, and it's so cool that I can carry on the torch for him. Like I I started I did a little bit of theater when I was growing up, and they took us to the side afterwards, and they said, well, you know, a lot of you are going to grow up, and you're you know you're going to go out after this, and you're going to start working professionally, and this is going to be your career.、And、I'm like, this can be my career? What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, I can do that. We grew up in a very much like you know. Go to school, do this. My parents are. It's very um, uh, chorus one. You know, a bunch of Puerto Ricans who were like,、oh, "Can you really do this?" No, we didn't watch. They didn't watch a lot of theater, but I fell in love with it. But as a kid, my brother and I used to. We would watch TV. Sometimes we would follow along. Some voices would turn the volume down. We write the shows and do different stuff. And then on trips, 
to whenever we went on summer vac like whenever we went on vacation, we would make these like uh, like radio like podcast shows. So which he was like the grandfather, he was like the grandfather of the crazy uncle and I was like a squirrel that traveled with him. And that was how we went like around the US whenever we went to So he was like and then I was like, hey that's crazy, what's going on? You know, and we would record all these things and like, I think it would drove our parents crazy. But um so when it was time later on, I went to, I went to college and went to theater and studied everything, and I got the opportunity to do this, I did not think it was something that I would, you know, I, I didn't think I would, I sort of fell into it. That My brother stole my car, and that's a very different story. He joined the army, just so that you know. So, <laughs> the other one became a police officer, but it was that. But, um, and, and I happened into that. But for me, I watched cartoons religiously. Now you can say that I might geek out sometimes when you know, mention some things that he worked on. We're not going to talk about that. But um, <laughs> we were we were big Yo Yo fans. We were also I was a huge Jimmy Palmer fan. Sometimes. So also my brother would put stuff on and I would just sit down and watch. But we we did all the voices. That was that was one of those things. So yeah. So but I didn't know. But we just we just made radio plays and did all that stuff. So when it came time, we were able in high school, I was in a local singing competition in New Jersey, and I signed, and a talent manager was there. And the first, and I thought I was, all I wanted to do was theater. I, I loved the theater. But the first audition she sent me on was for a voiceover for a commercial. And I thought, this is a job? <laughs> like Lisa. And it was for wart cream. <laughs> yeah, very glamorous. And I, I booked the job. And I couldn't believe, and I, I fell in love with being in a recording studio and just the, the way of how we only have our voices to use and the challenge of storytelling with just your voice and not being able to, you, you know, you use your body, but they don't see that. And I fell in love with the art of voice acting. I, I do a lot of audiobooks and work like that where it's not going to be animated and it relies on you, the storyteller. And that challenge is so much fun for me. All right, so now when people think of voice acting, they think you just hop in the booth, record once, and send it to post. Obviously, that is far from the truth. So what is the process that goes into voice acting and recording? It depends on what type of project. So for anime specifically, we don't get scripts ahead of time. So the process is to be ready for anything. And that means warming up your body, warming up your voice, um, being emotionally ready for whatever kind of script you have that day. For some projects, if you do, like for new animation, where it's American animation and it's new, we, we usually do get a script ahead of time. And then it's making sure you've prepped the script. And again, that you're vocally and physically ready for whatever challenges come up that day. Hmm. As an actor, also, it, all of that is physically prepared. You do all that in the actual, and you have as much of the character as you know. Sometimes you can watch some of it or read about it, but not always when you're doing doing that with the original language, but, um, uh, and when you're, when you're recording it, we'll read, we'll, we'll oftentimes listen and hear what they've done, and then we can, we'll be guided by the director to do that. As a director, I'm the one who watches the whole series, who watches all the episodes, knows what people are talking to, and so I can give people context. So when the actor comes in, they don't have to think about who is this person, why are they speaking to them. I can give them all that information so they can kind of just organically respond. It, it really does depend on the day um, because there's a lot of different things that we do as voice actors. So I was working on a game called Horizon Zero Dawn and my preparation for that game was shaving because I did facial cast. And what they do when you go in is they draw all these dots on your face and then they put a helmet on you with 
lights and cameras, and they track your face motion as you perform as the character. So when I went back and saw the gameplay of my character, Boss, it looked like me with dreadlocks on, because they really <laughs> captured my face. So the prep that day was making sure I was shaved. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, well, for me, you know, it, your voice is your instrument attached to your brain. And uh, for me, it's constant training of the voice acting. Just, just because you can't talk doesn't mean you can be a voice actor. Uh, it's like singing in the bathroom. Just because you sound great in the bathroom doesn't mean you can cut, a, cut records. Um, so, as a young actor, I had to study singing, uh, elocution. I had to study languages. I studied opera so I could sing songs in German, Italian, French. Wow. Um, and my studies continue. I went to Berlitz to study languages. And the kind of work that I've done, I mean, you know, in Japanese, I, I had to study Japanese, but yet I also had to study Kansai then. I had to study Kichinaguchi. Uh, I had to study Thai language. I've spoken in Vietnamese and Cambodian. And those languages are very different from one another. So you have to keep training. So the process is not, not a simple one. So I continue to study today, and then when I get a part, I prepare for it. I, I go back to those, to my resources. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> now, all of you have an extensive portfolio of work. Amazing work, I might add. Out of all the characters that you have voiced, if you had to pick just a single one, it's kind of a, a hot a button, like on the spot, you had to pick one character, first thing that comes to your mind, um, which character would be your favorite uh, voice character to voice over? You know, uh, we talked about this the other day, and our voices and our characters are like our children. So to say, which is your favorite child? <laughs> you know, it's like, mm, I, you know, we can't say. So one child is good in one area, one child I love for another reason. Um, I can tell you, you know, I, it, it's been a wonderful life as a voice actor and as an actor. Uh, I've had experiences that, uh, you know, I've worked all over this world, not just my country, but all over this world. And, uh, uh, and I've worked with amazing people, and uh, the life of a voice actor it, it, it is unique, is really unique, and we have some really skilled people in, in our craft, you know, and uh, I would just relate to you one experience I had, I worked with a great director, uh, many, many people you probably have never heard of him, his name is Billy Wilder. And um, he brought me into the booth because he had shot a scene in Hawaii and he wanted to recreate the sound of a Hawaiian. And, um, and I was born and raised in Hawaii. So I had that fortunate experience and my career has been dotted with those kinds of experiences. Um, if you don't know Billy Wilder, you should. He made the films, The Apartment, uh, and uh, uh, some like it hot and Sunset Boulevard, and you should you should learn who he is. Um, and uh, he gave me my best acting lesson in my life when I worked with him. He said, "It's young, don't act, just let it out of your body." And that was the best. Uh, Ditto, you know, I have a very hard time choosing a favorite character. Um, I, I think one thing, 
highlight also is how difficult it is to get cast as these characters that we were fortunate enough to play. Um, you know, you see very clearly events like this are successes because we're talking about the characters we've played and you know, you see at our tables banners of all the, the roles that we have, but what you don't see is all of the auditions that we weren't cast as, all of those times, and my outbox is like a graveyard of auditions <laughs> that I wasn't cast as. Um, I, I tell people, if you book one out of a hundred auditions, you're doing really well as a voice actor. Um, so knowing the amount of work and the amount of luck, you know, it's like winning the lotto being cast in these roles, and all of those auditions are like buying lotto tickets. Um, so knowing what we as actors go through to become a single character, even to, to be in the booth for a few minutes, I feel fortunate to play any character. Um, so to pick a favorite uh, actor, you know, my career that, again, has been dotted with fortune and so many great franchises and roles that I've been fortunate enough to play, how can I choose a favorite? I am going to pick a favorite against that. But it is not, but understand that my favorite usually winds up being what I just did. Or if you ask me tomorrow, I may give you a different answer. But this, the reason why I say this, there are two roles that have lived with me the longest. And the very first role that I ever did, I was lucky enough that it was the very first project that I auditioned for was a role in a show called Record of Lotus War. I played a character called Dee. Um, she's an elf princess. She has beautiful blonde hair. She is someone as an actor I would never have been cast as when you looked at me. And that, for me, was an amazing thing to know that with just my voice, there was a whole different world of opportunity for me. Um, the second, will be and always will be with Nina in the verse of Slayers. Because, yeah, she, she's sort of a gateway anime for many people. And unlike Deedlet, she's absolutely crazy in everything that she does. And she blows up a lot of things and has a whole bunch of energy. And when I went in, it was a combination of uh, the character of Rumi Hayashibara that I had heard and also um, made less because she was, to me, very, very, um, she had a, a very, very, like, you know, here I'm six in town, let me tell you what I'm gonna do, and drop a joke kind of thing. So she was one that I walked in, I saw her, and I was like, I know who you are. And that was always super cool. And she, and it, she became a cult classic, so even now, so many years later, I'm still, I still get to live with her. And we just did an audio book of her as well, that makes me that makes me feel blessed. Unless she blows things up. Yeah. <laughs> I can't pick a favorite character, but if I had to pick one to have dinner with, <laughs> I think it would be Mogu Bakaiba from UPO because he has access to the Kaiba Corp jet. <laughs> and he yeah. can go anywhere and like have a really good dinner. Um, also all the gadgets and so I want to see the inside of Kaiba Corp. I want to see the inner workings. I don't know if I'd want to hang out with Seto, but I think Mogobo would be fun as long as he did not get kidnapped again. Because I would not want that on my conscience. Kind of a guarantee. <laughs> and for let you have your voices heard, we are going to open up the floor to audience Q&A. So if you have a question for our guests, please raise your hand. Uh, I've got a super good question for you. Um, I talked to Bryce Papenhoek yesterday. Uh, it was really nice being all of you. You guys are great. Uh, you guys do some great work. Um, would it be possible? I don't know if it's too early right now. But would it be possible for you to do the damn new traders thing, or would that be like later? Yeah. Uh, sorry, guys. It's super loud. Um, I, I got you. I got to stand up to do it. It's a line for my show. I'm gonna be very loud. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all my characters are super quiet. Uh, wait, who's seen Attack on Titan? <laughs> who's never seen Attack on Titan? 
Cool, for you guys who haven't seen it, it's a lighthearted comedy, just <laughs> a new couple just started, it'll be great. Not um, at all. <laughs> this is a little taste of what I do in the show. Uh, you, you guys ready? Sorry, it's loud. Go there. I'll see you over there. It's not loud. Okay, you're right after. I gotta breathe in all the, the oxygen in the room. Damn you! You traitors! <laughs> they, when they shot it, they, I was really lucky. The engineer knew what I was going to do that day. And um, some of the microphones that we have have what's called a cap in them, the, the Neumann mics, are really high-end mics. They have this little circle that's sitting on the inside. And if you look, yell loud enough, the pressure of your yell will slam the cap against the back of the microphone, and it sounds like this. Yeah. So they can't use that tape. But fortunately, this engineer knew what was coming, and he recorded a backup track on what's called a shotgun mic, uh, which is so strong it can pick up a jet engine. Like, these are not typically used for this kind of VO. But he knew what I was gonna do in the booth that day, so he shot the backup with the shotgun and was able to keep that particular tape that's in the show. Uh, and it's wow. definitely one of my favorite lines throughout the series. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, so, I just wanted to ask, as I'm an aspiring actor and that's kind of what I wanna do, in life, and I just want to know what is the biggest challenge to overcome when you're starting out? I'd say first you have to love this. And it sounds like you do. You love doing it, and it has to be the only thing you want to do. Then I think you train and train and train. You know, like Yoni was saying, you learn everything you can. If you're a student of life and acting classes and voice classes and improv classes. And then you have to remember that it's also a business. You have to be your own business person. And I find a lot of wonderful actors who forget that this is also a job and a business industry. So you have to be, have both, both left and right brain to be business-minded and artistic. And if you can do that, I think you have a better chance of succeeding. I would say once you have building on her, those are the basics of continuing and working. But one of the things when you start and as you go along is much like what Bryce said, you have to have a belief in yourself and you have to be able to get a thick skin because you can be wonderful. And there are a lot of wonderful, fantastic actors, but you will, you will get rejected, you won't get the job, you may get, it may take you many, many tries before you even get seen. And you may get feedback that you should maybe do this, you should do that. You have to be persistent with yourself and find a way to feed yourself and your soul while you're doing it until you get where you are. Um, and then know, even once you get that job and you're successful, this if you're in this a long time, you'll be up and down and up and down. Someone may love you, may, you may be the hot thing for years and then, man, does it ever know that people hurt too much of you? And then all of a sudden, they discover you again. So it's it's one of those things where you have to carry your own work inside of you. So remember that what you do, you work for, but who you are is what keeps you going. And you have to separate the two and not just get not just take other people's opinion of you as that. You have to believe in yourself. You know, and make sure that you build a network of people around you who will believe in you too. Another thing that's uh, actually very important early on in your career is the concept of a day job. And um, because the business has no guarantees, it's not like you're going to work nine to five, 
you might not work for a very long time and supporting yourself financially is also very important. Um, if you go into an audition and you're just there to pay the bills and you think, if I don't book this, I won't pay my rent, it puts so much pressure on you that you can't act, you can't be an artist, you can't have fun. And I really found that once I let go of that pressure, once I kind of grew in another industry, I, I ran a front-end web design company, which was a great day job because I could build websites before or after an audition. I could do that from anywhere. If I needed to, to go and do something particular for voice acting, I could go and do that and still maintain something that could support me financially. Uh, and that took all the pressure off. So whenever I was in the booth, I was just enjoying myself and having fun. And I think that came through in my auditions and that's what led to my success as an actor. So that's another thing to think about is, how can I give myself a runway as an actor um, to establish myself and learn these things and get comfortable in the audition process, get enough at bats to potentially or hopefully get a role? Thank you. You have to forgive me. I find this a very strange question all the time here. And um, I'm going to come down a little hard on it, not you, but on, the, on that question and on that kind of thinking. Because nobody would go to an architect and say, Do you know, I'd love to build a bridge. How can I do that? Uh, <laughs> or to a doctor and say, You know, I love surgery. I love cutting up people. How can I? Uh, do you think I have a shot at it? You know, okay. and acting for me is a craft. You know, it's a, a, a long, hard road of study and competition. And if you want to be one, prove it. You want to be, you got to be better than me. You got to be better than her. Uh, so, you know, it's a lot of it, it's a lot of work. And, you know, there's an old saying: sometimes you have to go a long way around in order to get the shortest way. So uh, it's a very long, hard, arduous task. And you should not be asking, you know, what is, what I would love to do it. Just because it's popular and just because you love it and just because your friends love it and love you doing it, doesn't mean you can do it. It's two separate things. So, and tough is good to be tough because tough people were tough for me. When I was started, people said, go back home. Go drive a truck or something. You don't stand a chance. I had to relearn how to talk. I didn't speak English uh, like most people. I spoke my patois in my dialect, and I had to work really hard. I worked really hard. I suffered a lot, and so um, so it, it takes a lot of work. And all I can say is prove it. Do the work. <laughs> but let me give you one word of confidence. Once you go through that long, arduous task and that hard road, remember one thing. They can be better than you in a lot of things, screaming, yelling, animal sounds, but nobody can be better than you, than you. So it's that voice in you that you have to find. And finding that voice is what you should be concerned with. And sometimes you have to go through that long drought in order to find you. Once you find you, then you can do it. Thank you.